Ladies and gentlemen, we are back with a brand new season, a brand new episode. You see it. Not Your Average Podcast, hosted by me, of course, the most energetic entertainer, Manny Supreme. And I have one of my favorite producers, and I'm not just saying that because he's in here today. Ladies and gentlemen, Backwoods. That's good. Mr. That's Lighted good. Up himself. How you feeling today, I'm doing man? great. How are you? It's good, man. It's good to have you, man. So with music, I mean, we have to talk about it. Shout out to my dog, Mon. He set it up, you know. Yeah, shout big out to RCA Mon, in the building, you know what I'm saying? With the sound that like we just gonna hop straight into it, the sound that you have created over these past couple months, years with this new underground music, and you know I, I tell we so all the time that you know it's it's not underground to me anymore because mm -hmm. it's music that I'm hearing when I'm I'm going out and I'm hearing in Target randomly. I meant to tell you I, I heard every day in Target in Atlantic Station. I was like, what is going on? I guess I guess the manager's hip. You <laughs> feel me? So it's like it's music now that's transcending to all ages. Is you know, older people, goats like, you know, Pharrell is reaching down. Talk about how did you get started with your creation of making beats? So, like, I was in college and... What school? Uh, Santa Barbara City College. Okay, shout out. And uh, I was with my aunt that's mm -hmm. here today. Shout out. To, shout out. Hey, how you guys doing? <laughs> so, I literally was just partying and uh -huh. just, like, not, like, doing school where, you know what I'm saying, just, like, trying to find myself mm -hmm. and... I grew up with like a lot of people from Atlanta because I'm from here. Uh -huh. And I what just part? saw uh, Cobb County. Okay, okay, for, yeah. sure, for sure, for sure, for sure. So then like, I was just like, damn, like this is crazy. Like my fr old friends going crazy mm -hmm. in this music shit. I'm like, I can do this. Yeah, so I was yeah. like calling everybody like, yo, should I do this, should I do this? Uh -huh. So then I just reached out to someone on Twitter and I was like, who makes beats in LA? Just mm -hmm. some random shit. Mm -hmm. And it so happened to be somebody that was in the same college town I was in. Mm -hmm. So he was like, he like, taught me how to make beats, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So then I, I started from right there. That's fine. So we're coming up musically. I'm sure music has always been a thing that you did. Now, talk about, before we talk about the music, college. How was college? Because I'm at Georgia State right now, and it's like being in the industry and college at the same time, it's like, you know, you you, you got to work the move. Mine can attest. You, you got to be able to work the move. Yeah. How was it? Like, was it like a for sure, like, okay, this is what I'm doing? Were you in class looking at your teacher like, you know, thinking of what melodies you were doing. Like, how was it when you knew you was ready to blossom? Like, I feel like when I feel like really put my mind to it and like how I can like connect with people mm -hmm. and just like them, so many people fuck with me. Uh -huh. I was like, oh yeah, this is, before, I, when I started, I didn't even know how to make beats. I just knew I was going to be going crazy. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I couldn't even figure out how to make a beat. Yeah. Like, I'm just like, oh, this, I'm going to do this. It's I'm the going, confidence. I'm, yeah, you yeah, know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just stuck with that and like, you know what I'm saying? That's just hard. Turned into something. That's hard. So early influences, what were like some tones that maybe your aunt or like just people that you knew, your parents, what was some of that music you, you grew up to? Because I know back in the day, Ma, you can attest being from Clayton County, you hearing like Anthony Hamilton, you know, Shaka Khan on a good day. What were some of those songs? Um, it was a lot of old school, like soul, like mm -hmm. I can't even, like The Temptations, yeah. of course, Jackson 5. Uh -huh. um, Earth, Wind, and Fire. Mm -hmm. That's like, a good one. A lot of people for, forget about them. They, they were crazy. You feel me? Uh, Smokey Robinson. Mm -hmm. Like, just like, just a bunch of different things. Just like, I didn't know what it was going to be like useful uh -huh. at the time, but I was like, oh, this is kind of like fire. It's not hip hop because I grew yeah. up on like Atlanta hip hop. Yeah. So it's just like going to those family events mm -hmm. or like, you know what I'm saying, sitting in the car. It was different. Hit. Yeah. So you'd be like, what's this? Like, mm -hmm. this is different. Like, mm -hmm. I, I fuck with this. And now I, I find myself like listening to like, Sade on my own. I'm like, am oh I God. getting old or That's what like, I is it, what I mean. or like, is it good music? You know. So when you when you enter the the beat making scene, for all those people out there that are watching this interview, if they're interested in, in hopping into it, was it a fast process of how your beats you know blew up and you know mm -hmm. was it who you knew? Was it the networking experience? Like when you started making beats and they started to take off, explain that process and how that felt. Like, it took me a while, like, mm. I'm not gonna lie, like, first few placements, like, I paid for them. Mm. Like, I just, like, I said if I want to invest myself, like, they not, like, they not that hard, but yeah. if I, I know this is gonna work, they mm -hmm. want money, money to speak, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Fact. So, like, it just, it took me a really, a long time to, like, really get into my own sound. Uh -huh. I had to, like, really like, drop out of everything uh -huh. and leave LA, like, leave California and come back to Atlanta. Uh -huh. And I feel like when I came back to Atlanta, like, I started tapping in, like, Tony Snow, like, uh -huh. Reddo, like, 645 AR, 10K Duncan. Like, I, had to I tapped in with that, and then I just started working my way through Atlanta. Mm -hmm. So then I... Fire. You know what I'm saying? So, of course, you got to talk about it. Shout out to the dog, Fago. 
He's going absolutely crazy. A couple of hits you guys got, and you know, definitely we're going to the radio station. We're gonna get it going. Yeah, we need that. But some some <laughs> of those hits, I mean, you got every day. You got the song that you know was on Yachty's album. Mm -hmm. Like, explain the process. And I saw a video of of you explaining this earlier. Shout out to Cannon and the Tomorrow app. How important is it with finding an artist, locking in, not even necessarily having to be one artist, but just creating that sound when you're in the studio? Just describe a studio session with. Fago and Woods, how does that look? So like, when we first started working, like I didn't even know who he was. Like my friend was like, yo, you need to work with him. He's mm -hmm. gonna go crazy. And like, I didn't know any of his music. So mm -hmm. like when we first got in the studio, it was kind of like a little rocky. Like yeah, yeah. I was trying to accustom to his sound. Uh -huh. But then I realized when we, it was his birthday night and we were working on this song called The World Is Yours. And it took us four hours to make that song. Mm. Part of that reason is because the mic was backwards and we couldn't figure out why. <laughs> what was going on? Yeah, why was it uh, sounding like that? Uh, Trying to figure it out. Yeah, it was That's like, why is it sounding like yeah, that? Yeah. So then it, we, we we figured it out uh -huh. and you know, we worked on it and then it was like, we took our time uh -huh. and I was like, it was so fire. I was like, damn, bro, like, like I didn't know you really be like sitting down and working like this. Mm. I fuck with this. I want to grow. Yeah. I want to do this. He was like, Bro, I realized like I didn't realize you wanted to make music like this. I thought you wanted to make a song and get me get out the house. Hey, like, get on, yeah, yeah. I was yeah. like, nah. I was like, nah. I'm trying to like really like lock in. Lock in. Mm -hmm. So then I feel like once that like we had that moment, I feel like everything like clicked. It clicked. Yeah. So I see you guys are doing shows too now. Like I saw, I don't know. I think you guys were overseas. I don't yeah, know what we show had, like, it was. Little, little tour run. It, it, explain just the energy, because a lot of people, you know, shout out my dog Rocket. Me and him, we do a lot of shows together in the city, but. Explain like having to have that energy because there's only been a couple of people who I've met mm -hmm. that's been able to like really invigorate a crowd. Like, explain how that feels. It feels at first like you have the butterflies too. Yeah, is it like, man. Oh, I don't Bro, know. I mean, like when we were in Brazil, uh -huh. I was on. We were on the way. I'm like, I gotta play soothing music. I can't hear no rap. I need to get like my stomach. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. But I feel like once you step foot on that stage, it's like it's, it's like everything gets released, and you mm -hmm. just like. Once you say those first few words, it's, it's over with. It's over with. And being in Brazil, like, was it kind of eye-opening to know that, like, bro, we're in a whole different country and, like, these people are it was jamming I us? Yeah, it was eye-opening when people knew the lyrics. Like, word for word. Yeah, like, it was crazy. I was like... Insane. Yeah, even in Europe, like, they knew the lyrics. Like, there's a song he has called Knock Knock. Mm -hmm. I just drop it. Everybody know that. Word for word. Yeah, it's crazy. Now, Knock Knock, I, you know, shout out to Rocket again. He was one of the ones at first. He sent me one of that, like, that on the MP3 before. It was like, wait, I was like, yo, like, who is this? Like, like a couple years like, ago? A couple, like, way back. Yeah, and back I then, I was like, yo, like, this is catchy. I think this is really before, like, TikTok really took off. But explain, like, the methods and how, like, People who are watching this, whether they make beats, they're a, a social creator or influencer, explain how methods and hopping on like TikTok and these new apps can like help your brand when it comes to beats or just being out in the industry. I feel, I feel like it's there's so many like lanes you can take mm -hmm. and trying to get your music out there. I necessarily won't don't like try to put everything everywhere because yeah. I just felt because I try to like really like make good good music and mm -hmm. I feel like a lot like TikTok's turning into just like parts in the song and you just blow up and have a career mm -hmm. and just like people don't ever, never they just put some shit out and like they don't even know have a real vision for it so I feel like it's a good it's a good it's a curse in it. You're you know taking the words right out of my brain. I yeah. say this all the time. Yeah, all like the time. I don't want my song to blow up on TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. You I want to be the organic way, right, I man? The, not overnight success. Hell no. I want that shit on the radio. Yeah. I want that in the club. I want it played in Everywhere. the elevator. Mm -hmm. Like that's how you know you got like some real shit. Like mm -hmm. you at the you at the Ritz Carlton. We just had a meeting and like this song came on. We were like, yeah, this, if you and the Ritz Carlton, then you must be doing something. <laughs> you made it. <laughs> I, forget the Grammy, just play my song at the Riz. That's what it's about. So, you know, like I said before, you've linked up with crazy top tier world renowned producers, like for real. Like, explain that process. Like, how did you guys meet? How did that come about? Were there, was there a time you sat there and you looked up, like, yo, like, I'm really living this life right now? Um, so, we went down to Miami mm -hmm. and Ooh, shout out to Barry, Barry uh, Fago's manager, my mm. partner. <laughs> Hefner, right? Yeah. yeah. So he, I guess he sent Fro his music or K1, um, KP, and uh, I guess Fro was fucking with it. And then mm. we took a trip down there, went Fire. to his like little studio house. It wasn't little; it was pretty big. <laughs> he, he can't even be little, like. Yeah. yeah. Um, and we just vibed out. I don't know. It was like it was like a, a surreal moment, but I felt like it was like perfect and right. Like it just felt like. Like people ask me like how was it? How mm -hmm. I was just like it's cool because like 
Pharrell's a very like genuine, like down to earth person, mm -hmm. and he's not really like ah. Yeah. So it's like he. It makes me want to explain it that way as mm -hmm. well, because it's like so chill. It was like it was real when you got a chance yeah. to sit down with him. Yeah. So like, explain like your musical process when you first sit down. Like you first, oh, you use FL. Uh, I, I, I go back and forth. I yeah. use Ableton. And shout too. out my dog Bosco. That's the only reason why I know. Mine looking like, are you a producer? Like, no, I'm only a host. But what, <laughs> explain when you first sit down and you open up your laptop. What are some of your like beginning processes? Like, do you hum melodies in your phone and then you get it going, or like, what's that process like? So usually, um, people send me loops. Uh -huh. Like my emails for the loops, and mm -hmm. I just go through like my go-to people and mm -hmm. just like try to catch a vibe, just like try to find something different. Cause a lot of people send the same things. Mm -hmm. So I just try to find something that's like a little different or just like good progressions uh -huh. or something. And I just go from there. Fire. So before you get out of here, we have to talk about top five producers all time. I, get, I need five from you. Top five? Five. Like these gotta be like, if you was to create, how many heads are on the Mount Rushmore? It's four? Four. I, hey, I'm in college, but I'm not a social stage manager, man. So, four. <laughs> Let's do four. What is Backwoods, Four Heads, Goats, or Producer? Okay. So, Metro, Southside, Sunny. Gotta take them. Yeah, out. yeah, You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, um, Calvin Harris. Calvin Harris is so underrated. That so is underrated. a good, that is a He's great going crazy. point. That is a great point. When he dropped, uh, I think it was like that funk bounce volume. Waves, one. that, yeah, that, that shit, was insane. That was like the summer album. Like, that changed that the year. world. Yeah. What songs are on there? He had, that Kehlani song, the Slide song. Oh, with Quavo. The Traps, Trav song. There was a lot of songs. Yachty, 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 Yachty. Yeah, Yachty. there were a lot of songs on there. Yeah. I, was I like forget a, about Calvin Harris. Calvin Harris has a lot of hits. You know what I'm saying? Who do, you, do you think if there was, I think producers should have like versus battles. Who would you, who would you, okay, let's do this. Who would you put up a versus battle against Pharrell? Timberland. That's legit. They had like the same amount of songs on the radio at the same time. Okay, Kanye West. Tame Impala. I want to see what they could do. Mm. They're not really producing. You were naming some like people who I listen to on a daily basis that I'm forgetting about. That's crazy. Yeah. Tame is, what's your favorite Tame song? Mine is Eventually. Uh, Less I Know Is Better. <sighs> That's a great one. That's like a vacation song. Like you're you know out. That is a great song. All right, last one. Don Cannon. Hit Boy. Hit Boy does have some. I feel like that's a good hit, matchup. That is a matchup. That is a great matchup. Yeah. It is an excellent matchup. Okay, so with your career, like where can you see yourself five, ten years down the line for real? Um, well, I want at least like ten number ones. Oh, yeah, yeah. These ten number ones, on my own label. Uh -huh. um, I don't know, just just enjoying life, yeah. being happy, staying wide, mm -hmm. like being still hungry the way I was when I started. Mm -hmm. Like I really don't want necessarily like I don't want to. I don't know where I'm gonna be. Yeah. But like I, I know what I want. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I just want to. You know what I'm saying? Stay true to myself. Yeah. <laughs> Remember your purpose. I think that's yeah. important. Most definitely, I think that's important. Cause that's gonna take. That's gonna take me through up, up through there. You know. What Every I mean? time. Yeah. Every time. Now, with being here in the city, you know, in Atlanta, when you left out to LA, was that like a big change, or is it how you say, or is it how people say, like? You can't get you can get lost in LA, but if you know what you're out there for, then you can you yeah. know, make the most so, of it. I went to, so I was born in Atlanta and I moved to St. Louis uh -huh. in like high school. And then I was finna go to the Air Force cause like, what? I didn't really think about college. Yeah. And I called my aunt. Uh -huh. I was like crying, like, I do not want to go to the Air yeah, Force. Yeah. Like, oh, it's not me. She's like, come out here. Mm -hmm. So I feel like I was like, I don't go, I don't, I don't know where I was gonna be, but everybody, nobody else is going to California. Yeah. From my school, yeah, yeah. So like, yeah. I'm out. Like, <laughs> see y'all later. I ain't been back, but you know, I'll yeah. go back, but I haven't been back to St. Louis. Yeah. yeah. But. So when you got out to LA, what, what was the process and like, was it hard to meet people? I heard like you had to be in like cliques, like if you're skate culture, if you rap or like, how was it out there like mixing and mingling with people? So it was kind of rocky like meeting people because I knew people in Atlanta, but nobody like really in LA. Uh -huh. And I was working at Macy's at the time and I met this guy I was working with. He was like, yeah, my homies from Sacramento do music. They live in LA. We should go down. So we went to go visit them. Uh -huh. and. I feel like going, like meeting them, that's how I started moving, moving mm -hmm. through like the little, that's when SoundCloud started going crazy. Mm -hmm. I started moving, like moving through like mm -hmm. the SoundCloud scene at Fine. that time. 
fire. This is like when Perp and Pump and like way back. Whoa. Whoa. That was like 17, 2017, 18. Yeah. Insane. Yeah. So talk about how that music did when you were listening to sounds and you know, people like that, did that help influence like some of the beats you were making or like where did you go? Like cause I when I when I type your name into YouTube, you have your own tight beats now. Like how does yeah, that feel? Yeah, I saw feel? I was like like I it, it like, literally says backwards tight beats. Like how does that feel? I think it's funny. <laughs> it's kinda of fire though. It's like I made it. Like people know like like what? It's just it's just curious to see what people think. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I'd be on. Yeah. I'd be on some whole other shit. Does it match though? Have you ever found a beat where it's like, okay, I can see myself doing this? Yeah, but it'd be like I just be like, it's cool. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's cool. Yeah. It's cool. My dog, so we appreciate you for coming through again, man. You got any shout outs before we get up out of here, man? Man. Shout out to Sofeo since the eighties, Pink man. Hearts on the Way, Cactus Jack, all that. Yeah. Whole gang. My dog, appreciate you for coming through, man. Sure.